And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the selection show for the You Don't Know Jack Full Stream Medley Tournament. You all know how this is going to go. We have eight episodes, eight slots each. Winner of each episode goes on to the championship. If there is somehow a tie for the top... Oh, dear, I have not figured that one out. Anyway, this is for You Don't Know Jack Full Stream. Um, I have changed the wheel out a lot threw out some of the uh, names and threw in some new ones. So it could, there could be repeats, there could be some new freshers. You don't know. Anything can happen. We, okay, I'm not going to waste any more time. We're going to go ahead and get straight on into it, ladies and gentlemen. So, without further ado, Spinzies. Oh, God damn it, I shouldn't. Stop saying Spinzies, Index. Come on. Anyway. By the way, I am using a, a different real color format. I thought it looked cool. Anyway, first on the docket for episode one is Queen Chrysalis once again. Queen Chrysalis is, of course, the, uh, the changeling queen of the uh, My Little Pony Generation 4. We, we, I think everybody should know about this by now. Anybody? Anyway, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm already losing my speech. It's like 4 p.m. I've been doing this whole selection show thing all day. Anyway, spin the wheel. Let's get a new uh, get a new participant in. Hopefully, I land on some of the uh, the wheel slices that are new to this one. Michael Kovac. I was wrong. <laughs> yes, the uh, no wait. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. Wait a minute. I don't think there was a uh, Michael Kovac that popped up. That's a voice actor for Angel Dust. Yeah, Angel Dust popped up twice, but I'm not sure about Michael Kovac. Oh, wait, never mind. Michael Kovac was uh, episode 8 of Trivia Murder Party 2. But anyway, yeah, this one was another uh, repeat. I swear I did change up the wheel lineup. We're just not landing on the new slices yet. Okay. Also, there are some slices that did not pop, that were on the wheel for the first two selection shows, but did not pop up. Anyway, next up on the docket is Warren from Farfetch. I thought I uh, changed the wheel up a bit. I guess I was wrong. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that's Warren from Farfetch. That's the uh, bassist and the, um, the one that usually has a more realistic life expectation goals. He's kind of like the dad that's on the verge of a breakdown after an eight-hour uh, road trip with the family. Anyway, spin the wheel. Let's see what number four has to offer. And it is... J.J. Watt! That's a brand new one. Yes, J.J. Watt, the uh, number 99 uh, defensive tackle for the now Arizona Cardinals. Um, he used to be one of my favorite guys when he was with the Houston Texans. And then, and he was the reason that we were able to finally get rid of Bill O'Brien, the head coach. But then he got traded over to Arizona Cardinals, and I want to cry my eyes out. Anyway... Let's not be too depressed. Let's just spin the wheel and see what else we have in store. We got number five on the slot for episode one. Derpy Hooves is back! All right, Derpy Hooves is on the docket for the, uh, you don't know, Jack Fullstream. She might actually win this one. I'm not sure. Anyway, we're going to spin the wheel once again to see what else we can draw up. And for the next slot, we have... Joe Chin from Parappa the Rapper. Yes, Joe Chin. Uh, that's definitely a new new to this whole wheel thing. Yeah, I start, I, while I was on the break and having a lunch break, I read, um, I think, um, Tomas' uh, comment on how many characters from our requested episodes are going to appear on the wheel, and I realized I didn't actually do too many of that, so I figured I would switch things up to um, help give the fans what they were looking for. So, without further ado, yes, we got Joe Chin from Trapper the Rapper on board. We're going to spin the wheel once and again and see what pops up. Next up on the docket is...
Adam Jackson. That's his. That's his trifecta of appearances. Yes, Adam Jackson from Five Point Vids is on the docket for the third time. He is going to be a bit of a journeyman, and I'm pretty sure Urinating Tree is going to be supremely jealous of Adam, mainly because he has not been selected as of yet. I was uh, very surprised that has not yet occurred, even though he has been on the wheel for a good long time. That was my um, laundry that's gone off, so I'm going to have to rotate the laundry as soon as um, we get done with the selection show. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and spin the wheel once again and see what's in store. Who's going to take up the last slot for episode one, and it shall be... Ross Treadell! That's a definitely a new entry. So Ross Treadell is um, a commentator off the YouTube channel for um, Cultaholic Wrestling. He was a former um, character for What Culture before they um, spun off and did their own thing. Uh, but he is definitely a swell um, Englishman from um, Newcastle. Newcastle upon Tyne, England. So ladies and gentlemen, once again, uh, episode one has been completed. We have Queen Chrysalis, Michael Kovac, Warren, J.J. Watt, Derpy Hoops, Joe Chin, Adam Jackson, and Ross Twiddell. Episode 2 is coming up. Let's go and spin the wheel, see what we have in store. And first slot for Episode 1 is... Mordecai from the regular show. Yes, Mordecai the Blue Jay. Uh, that's definitely a new one on the on the wheel. Throughout, um, in fact, I pretty much throughout all of the uh, Sonichu characters, only because I I kind of made the made the Christian jokes a uh, few too many times. So I and I figured we would refresh the wheel a little bit. Mordecai is on board. Let's see who's going to be joining him for uh, episode 2. In the second slot we have uh, as soon as the wheel stops Asmodeus from uh, H Hell of a Boss otherwise known as Ozzy I'm trying to get the Name spelled correctly. Yes, Asmodeus from Hell of a Boss is back. I think this is his third appearance, I believe. I'm not sure. Yes, it's his third appearance. We're going to spend see who's going to join Mordecai and Asmodeus in episode two. Not a lot of in, uh, exciting or interesting things coming up um, so far. Yeah, this one's going to be a bit of a lower uh, medley tournament unless we see something that pops up of interest. Parappa the Rapper! Oh, I, I was wrong. I was wrong. That's right. Parappa the Rapper is in the tournament. Actually, believe it or not, Parappa the Rapper was on the wheel for the first two selections, and he did not make it on board. Ugh. Yeah, it kind of sucked, but now he's finally on board. Probably after I started adding more of his characters on board. Anyway, we're going to spin the wheel once again. And next up on the docket is Jack G. King. That's it. Uh, also known as Jack the Jobber, he is also a commentator for and uh, an internet personality from Cultaholic Wrestling. As you can tell, I I do have my thing with a uh, YouTube um, wrestling personalities. So yes, Jack G. King is on board. Alright, next up on the ducket is... And by the way, between, between the... Oh, A Adam Blompier! There we go! Everybody knows who uh, Adam Blompier is. Okay, everybody in the wrestling world. Uh, knows who Adam Blompier is. If you don't know, Adam Blompier was one of the most popular um, 
YouTube personalities, and still is to this day. He's now working at Wrestle Talk with uh, Ollie Davis, Luke Owen, and um, Boy Bl I don't think there was any other Wrestle Talk personality that made the uh, that made the selection show previously. I'm not sure. Anyway, but Adam Blompier is on board. Let's go and spin the wheel, see who's going to take up uh, slot number six for episode two. Yeah, I had lunch um, between the second and third recordings of the selection show, so I may sound a little tired. I do apologize for that. Cookie Masterson is back on board. Taking up slot number six for episode number two. We're going to go ahead and uh, spin the wheel one more time. See who gets episode, I mean slot seven for episode two. And the next wheel up on the docket is... Liquid Chris! Oh, yes. We have Liquid Chris once again. Um, I kind of was upset just a little bit to not have uh, Liquid Chris um, in the, uh, I think, Trivia Murder Party 1 medley tournament. But we do have him here for You Don't Know Jack Fullstream, and he can really use his intelligence. Um, by the way, um, the guy that was behind Liquid Chris, he's now a cancer researcher. Did you guys know that? I know, right? The guy that faked being a, um, being a low pal is now... One of the greatest dudes that ever lived. Oh, by the way, the uh, girl that he was trolling Chris with, they're now married IRL. It's like, oof. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, the whole uh, Casey saga of Chris Chan lore. Oh, man, it was a it was a wild ride. Wild ride. And, and the whole Liquid Chris saga, too. Anyway, we're going to spin the wheel. He's going to take up the last slot for episode two, and it's going to be Nifty again. All right, we got Nifty. I think this is our third selection off the uh, off the wheel. Nice. Okay, so recap for episode two. We have Mordecai from Regular Show, Asmodeus, Parapper the Rapper, Jack G. King, Adam Blompier, Cookie Masterson, Liquid Chris, and Nifty. And uh, believe it or not, um, here's a little story I forgot to mention. Adam Blompier and Jack G. King, or formerly known as Jack the Jobber from What Culture, they had a bit of a rivalry uh, back in like uh, 2016. Like there was this big um, Adam Blompier being the supreme leader, and Jack G. King being the Jobber, being the underdog. Like if you go back to What Culture and started looking into their lore from like 2016, this was just before they both left to. Um, Form cultaholic. It was a, it was a pretty it was a pretty good time. I think it was also um, it was also a heartwarming moment when uh, Face Jack G King, the hero, finally defeated Adam Blompier in a predictions contest to win the What Culture. Heaven. I know it sounds kind of stupid, but it warmed my heart. Um, it really did warm my heart back then, and I think this was just after my nephew was born. So. Something that me and my nephew watched together. Of course, my nephew was an infant back then. Anyway, spin on the wheel, ladies and gentlemen, for episode three. We're gonna first slot to take up is going to be Dylan Thomas. That's right, Dylan Thomas is uh, back on board. All right, uh, just a little reminder, Dylan Thomas is a uh, Chris Chan commentator that also does uh, other locales such as Linkara, Dark Side Phil, Rings of Redemption. We all know the, the whole deal here. We're going to spin the wheel once again, see who else pops up. And it's going to be... Sticks the Badger! That's definitely a new one um, that we've added. So, Sticks the Badger was a character that debuted in Sonic Boom. And basically, she's like this conspiracy theory. She's basically a child friendly version of Dale Gribble from King of the Hill. I know, I took you guys way back then. Um, yeah, King of the Hill lore of all that stuff. Oh, man. I, I loved Dale Gribble. He was, he was probably one of the most. Uh, 
uh, conspiracy theorist and stick the badger kind of in a in a certain way um, learned from her um, learned from her mentor <laughs> now now I've just come up with fan fiction ideas of of uh, Dale Gribble training sticks the badger about the real ways of life I know right anyway we're going to go on to a uh, third slot of episode three. It will be occupied by... Kenny McCormick from South Park. All right. A uh, very interesting um, lore from the South Park world. So there's this uh, new special called um, South Park Post-COVID, and it basically has everyone at South Park aged up like around 40 years and Kenny McCormick ended up being a fully bearded uh, scientist that tried to discover time travel and all that stuff he wound up dying or did he die? I, I didn't watch the uh, full episode because I was just watching the pirated versions I was not going to drop another twenty dollars a month for um, Paramount Plus when I pretty much only have enough for um, PlayStation Plus and um, uh, Apple Music. Anyway, spinning the wheel once again. Yeah, I know. I was kind of surprised Kenny McCormick didn't pop up in the uh, Trivia Murder Party selection shows. That would have been real funny. Oh my god, they killed Kenny. Y'all bastards. Anyway, oh, Vortex is back. I think that's uh, his um, second or third. I'm not sure. But anyway, Vortex is back. He's the he's Barack. Ferocica Mayday's uh, Hellhound from uh, Hell of a Boss. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and spin the wheel and see what pops up. Number five for episode three is going to be Shadow the Hedgehog, the original OG Edgelord, the emo hedgehog, the, ul the ultimate life form. Oh, okay. Ugh. A.K.A. The Baker. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and um, spin the wheel once again. And next up on docket is Matthew from Bajamania. Oh, yes. Okay, so Matthew from Bajamania. Um, if you've never seen Bajamania, it's basically a compilation clip show. Of all the crazy shit that has ever happened in the history of professional wrestling, mostly it's where um, they were trying to do um, moves in the wrestling ring and something goes horribly wrong, or maybe the uh, wrestlers were calling spots and it ended up making its way on the airwaves. Just look up Botchamania. The name's in the uh, parentheses, but whew, it's it's a doozy, doozy, ladies and gentlemen. God, that is that is like my binge watch um, compilation video of the week, I've, and I've been following Botchamania for a good long time. Nice to see Matthew in the tournament. Anyway, next up on the docket is Luna once again. Luna is back in the tournament, and I think this is her third appearance. So she is also a journey woman herself. Anyway, final slot for episode three is soon to be filled. And it's going to be Stan Marsh um, from the uh, South Park uh, lore. Yeah, um, that post-COVID episode was really fucked up. Apparently, Stan Marsh, sick of the farm, burned it down and uh, his sister died trapped in the burning barn. Whoopsies, he did, he forgot to check uh, who else was in the barn. And uh, his mom, Sharon, was so heartbroken over the death of her daughter, she couldn't handle it anymore and ended up uh, offing herself. And uh, that that really, that was really messed up. I, I, oh, God, that was supremely depressing. Anyway, I try to lighten the mood. Recap for episode three, we have Dylan Thomas, Sticks to Badgers, Kenny McCormick, Vortex, Shadow the Hedgehog, Matthew, Luna, and Stan Marsh. Time to uh, get the first episode of, uh, of uh, episode one, I mean episode four on board. Slot one, episode four, is going to be occupied by...
Kira, the dog from Farfetch, the hell puppy, once again. Nice to see you're on board. Let's go ahead and spin the wheel one more time to see who else pops up. And it's going to be... Ah, yes! Yes, finally! Finally, we got Urinating Tree on board! Oh my god! <laughs> oh, I could definitely... Oh, imagine if Urinating Tree was really excited to finally be selected. Like he sees Brandon Perna, Tom Grossi, and Adam Jackson all being selected, and he doesn't get selected. It's like, am I even in the? Am I even in the tournament? Uh, but yeah, we finally got Urinating Tree. I cannot stress to you how amazing Urinating Tree is at his sports commentary, especially when it goes full on Ginger Bowl. The Steelers are going to the Super Bowl. Woo! Sweep them, Gabbard! We are going to the Super Bowl. I don't care what you think of me. I don't care what you think of the Steelers. I don't care if the fact that we actually lost to the Los Angeles Chargers at SoFi Stadium in Inglewood. The Steelers are going to the Super Bowl. And the Texans, they are going to the Tank Bowl. We are going to be champions. Fear me. Fear the end. I do apologize for anybody listening to this on their headphones and, and wondering why the hell they got full <laughs> But that, that really is a urinating tree yinzer mode. <laughs> ah, nice to finally see urinating tree. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this uh, wheel spinning once again. Whew. Finally great to finally see a uh, urinating tree. Alright, and it's... And it's nice to see Charlie Magni on board again. Charlie Magni, the Princess of Hell from the Haspen Hotel lore. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, tap the screen, go again. And this time we have Kyle Brufflosky of South Park lore. Yes, this is, uh, yeah, he's now the new school counselor, believe it or not. And uh, I don't know whatever happened to Ike. Ever happened to Ike for um, Kyle's adopted brother from Canada? He was actually pretty much of a twelve character um, himself. Anyway, episode four, um, slot five. Especially they kick the baby uh, <laughs> bits uh, between Kyle and Ike. Anyway, uh, Princess Celestia is back on board, and. I just real and I did realize I forgot to um, add Princess Luna on board, so she's on the wheel somewhere. She just hasn't been selected yet. Anyway, we're going to um, spin the wheel. And next up is Bluey. Yeah, I, I was kind of um, a little. Yeah, Bluey was from a. Um, uh, the was from the requested episodes. I forgot who made the request. It probably was Tomas or somebody. But anyway, Bluey is this uh, popular um, character from her own TV show that was originally made for um, Australian children, but it found its way on uh, Disney Plus. It is basically one of the many shows that um, my nephew cannot get enough of. Cannot get enough of Bluey. And I didn't realize until um, after doing some research on uh, Bluey when the requested episode came in, Bluey's a girl! Yeah, I keep thinking for some reason Bluey was a dude. Same thing with Blue from Blue's Clues. Yeah, Blue's a girl dog, believe it or not. Absolutely blew my mind. I was today years old, and I promise not to use that reference ever again. <laughs> Uh, actually, you know what? No promises, because I'm going to just mess that. I, I've always break my promises at times. Ah, uh, oh, Alana Troyd. It is not a Jackbox medley tournament without the queen of winning Jackbox games, Alana Troyd. Oh, I'm think I'm not spelling her name right. And, of course, 
the queen of very fine. And that's actually how I started noticing Alana Torrid is because of her Jackbox Games fan art. She has many fan arts of, uh, of Redacted from Trivia Murder Party, Cookie Masterson, The Binge Pipe, um, Evil Robot, and um, Schmitty and all that stuff. She is, she was actually one of the, the finest, um, finest artists of all time, you know. And, like I said, I, I would uh, commission her for art, but I don't always have a lot of uh, spending spending money um, at the end of the day, you know. And she, anyway, I'm losing my train of thought. Um, it's It's been a while. I've, I've been doing laundry. I've been up since 6 a.m. after staying up until 2 p.m. last night setting up all this crap. And... I am literally running on four hours of sleep and five pots of coffee. Okay, not five pots of coffee. Just a pot of coffee and possibly uh, some Neo Energy in my water. Hey, I gotta get hydrated. I gotta stay hydrated. Anyway, spin the wheel, spin the wheel, spin the wheel. We need to, um, we need to get moving. Um, last slot of episode four is gonna be Adam Pacitti, the other um, Adam from uh, Cultaholic. Um, like I said, also in the uh, the what culture lore between um, Jack Chi King and Adam Blompier, one of the more famous rivalries between Adam Blompier and Adam Pacitti is, of course, Adam versus Adam because they both have the first name of Adams. But there's also a bit of a silly, a crazy and silly backstory for um, Adam Pacitti in particular. So if you look up Adam Pacitti's uh, billboard on uh, Google Images, you'll see him with an actual, legitimate, literal billboard that says. I spent my last 500 pounds sterling on this billboard. Please get me a job. And he actually got a job at um, some other internet company for a while before transferring over to uh, Watt Culture. Now he has his own internet channel. In fact, he was actually one of the lead, the lead founder of Cultaholic. So, you know, he, he, this guy is a success story. This guy is an internet success story. And he is awesome. Anyway. Recap for episode four. Kyra, Urinating Tree, Charlie Magni, Kyle Proflowski, Princess Celestia, Bluey, Alana Atroid, Adam Pacini. You're, uh, Alana Atroid, I would like to personally introduce you to your name. I just realized they're in the same episode. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. If I do manage to get some extra spending money, I think that's what I'm going to... Two, I'm gonna I'm gonna ship some pictures of uh, the sports cast, uh, urinating tree, Adam Jackson, the uh, clickbait sports, yeah, Adam uh, urinating tree, Adam Jackson, uh, Brandon Kerner, and Tom Grassi. I'm just gonna, if I get the money, I might that might be my thirty dollar commission to a lot of Troy. Make. <laughs> I just want to see what they look like if they were drawn by a lot of Troy. Okay, I'm a weirdo. Okay. I have weird taste in uh, my art, I have weird taste in my entertainment, and I have weird taste in, um, you know, my lifestyle. I mean, my idea of going out for a night on the town is a highlighter yellow shirt and black jeans, okay? Anyway, we're going to the first slot of episode five. And next, first up is going to be Twilight Sparkle. I don't think I, we've had Twilight Sparkle on board. Uh, before, but now that we do, welcome aboard, our Twilight Sparkle. First slot of episode five. The second slot is now to be occupied by you're back on board, Gurak. <laughs> uh, we we all know who uh, Gurak um, Evil is at this time. Yeah. He is also a bit of a journeyman in of himself. He's already in uh, two um, uh, medley tournaments, and now he is going to jump on board the third one. He's got three chances to win a title. Will he win? Hopefully so. And he, he kind of sounds like the guy that would uh, be great at trivia games, so this might be his uh, time to shine with You Don't Know Jack. I'm not sure. We're never sure about anything in these days. We're never sure, especially in the medley tournaments. 
Smokey McSee, the Chris Chan uh, commentator that originally featured in the Trivia Murder Party 1, um, Episode 7, and I think he was also, um, I'm not sure. But anyway, Smokey McSee, welcome back on board. You're now in Episode 5 of the, you're in the Full Stream Medley Tournament. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and spin the wheel once more. Sunny Funny from Prepper the Rapper. I think Sunny Funny was um, Prepper's uh, love interest, if I remember correctly. Um, I saw the um, I saw the video game playthroughs. I don't have the video game myself, uh, but uh, yeah, I think Sunny Funny was Prepper the Rapper's love interest. I only know too much of Prepper the Rapper from the Chris Chan lore when he tried to enter that Prepper the Rapper contest, and Prepper the Rapper was. Um, I think of Tomas. Tomas, did, were you the one that requested that episode? Let me know in the comment section. Um, I, I I completely forgot who uh, requested that one. I gotta really um, go back to my archives and keep track of who did what. Anyway, Tails from the Sonic the Hedgehog lore is on board. Um, I've always found the whole concept of a fox with two tails interesting and using it to um, propel himself into the air. I like it. I like it. I absolutely do. Anyway, we're going to uh, spin the wheel. This is going to be uh, slot six for episode five and it's going to be Greg Woods, uh, Joe's Marble Worms commentator. So if you guys have never heard of this, Marble League, yes, from Joe's Marble Runs, is one of the most popular marble racing events of all time, Marbula One. Um, and I think they're going to get started on doing the uh, Marbula Extreme Sports uh, X or something like that. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's um, And it's commentated in English by Greg Woods. He is an amazing character and an uh, amazing guy to uh, listen to on board. It's almost asmr -ic. Um, the way Greg Woods just speaks, but he, um, he is, he's very talented, he always keeps up with all the marbles, I barely keep up with anything when I'm watching, uh, when I'm watching the videos on YouTube, basically, I'm, sometimes I just watch videos on YouTube in the background while I gotta go and, uh, clean the house, but anyway, spinning the wheel, welcome aboard, Greg Woods, Joe's Marble Run commentator, and the next one we have <laughs> uh, Oh wait a minute, I just realized this is the second time that uh, Smokey McSee is in the same episode as Chris Chan. Oh man. Alright, alright. You know we gotta do it. Mrs. Jesus Christy Weston Chandler Sonic Chu, the goddess blue heart and Lord and Savior. And Messiah of all. Oh, man, I think I, I missed a few titles that time, but wow. <laughs> I, I actually thought I got rid of Chris Chan this time around, but, uh, yep, you know what? I'm, I'm actually glad, glad, I, glad I kept Chris Chan around. So now, Craig Woods! <laughs> Craig Woods! Is, and of course, the princess herself, Twilight Sparkle, she's in the same episode as Chris Chan. Oh, I kind of wish it was a Trivia Murder Party medley uh, episode, but you know what? We'll take what we can get, ladies and gentlemen. We'll take what we can get. All right, final episode, uh, final slot of episode five is Serpentius. Oh, yes. The evil overlord want to be uh, from uh, the Haspen Hotel lore. All right, so recap in episode five, we have Twilight Sparkle, Gurik Weevil, Smokey McSee, Sunny Funny Tales, Greg Woods, Chris Chan, and Sir Pentius. All right, let me look up the. No, no, no. Okay, I thought I thought I saw something familiar, but I, I was incorrect. Anyway, episode six, we're gonna spin the wheel. And see what else pops up. All right, first slot for episode six is going to be Sweet 
Sally Mae from Hell of a Boss. I, I'm sorry, I just have to use the word sweet before I'm saying Sally Mae's name. Uh, Sally Mae, oh. Yeah, yeah, another one of my um, character crushes. I know I am. I, I'm a weirdo. But yeah, Sally Mae, the uh, trans um, imp character, and uh, Millie's sister from uh, Hell of a Boss. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure she's also a, a psychopathic murderer as well. Hey, if it don't, it don't count if they don't know, if they don't, oh, god damn it, I, me I messed up the line. But, uh, it, just look up the line. It, it's, it's real funny and awesome. Anyway, spin the reel. We're gonna get slot two of episode six. Ed Bosco, the voice actor for, um, Alistair from the Haskin Hotel is on board oh, once again. Let's go ahead and spin the wheel, see what else we can grab. Uh, third slot for episode six is Rosie again from Haskin Hotel, the, um, the Overlord. We all know who she is. I've already explained it twice in the previous two um, medley tournaments. I I'm pretty much really tempted to just speed run through the rest of this. Stall is from the Hell of a Boss. We know who he is. The Daddy Who's Hooting. Oh, I did it again! I can't say Stolas without using the term Daddy Hoot Hoot. Oh, God. Have I, have I lost my mind, comment section? Everybody in the chat section, let me know if I lost my mind. I think I'm going to have chat available because I'm doing this as a premiere. Have I lost my mind? By yourself. <laughs> spin the wheel and expend the wheel. Spin the wheel. And let's just get let's get some more on board. All right. Barbie Wire, um, uh, Blitz's sister from Hell of a Boss. Uh, we all know who she's gonna be at this point. Next episode. Come on, we got we gotta see who we gotta get. We gotta see Barbie Wire. Gotta see Barbie Wire. Anyway. Uh, let's spin the wheel, see what else is next. And we have... Rarity, My Little Pony G4. We have Fashion Icon. We all know who she is by at this point. If you don't, Google is your friend. Or better yet, use DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo doesn't track your uh, data. And sell it to uh, advertising companies. They did not pay me for that spot. They just, I just like DuckDuckGo. Bob Barker! Okay, so, um, I got a little bit of a funny story with Bob Barker. So, when I was, um, watching Smokey McSee's videos on Chris Chan letters, Chris Chan mentioned showering with Bob Barker soap, and I was like, the fuck? Bob Barker has his own line of soap, so I typed it up on Google, and apparently, Bob Barker, which was actually founded by a, um, former, um, newspaper editor by the same name um, Barb Barker is is a is an online store that's online wholesale warehouse store that specializes in prison products so Barb Barker is the line of really crappy lower than life boy quality of soap that uh, Chris Chan is using to shower with so yeah yeah that is freaking weird also, Bar Barker um, makes all sorts of prison stuff, such as prison, prison trays, prison cups, even prison game pieces made out of silicon. And basically, the whole point of it is to try and uh, reduce the likelihood of them being used as weapons and shanks and stuff. But oh my goodness! Yeah, there is a yeah. I was today years old when I found out there is actually a store, a supply chain store for prisons called Bob Barker. And you know what? On that thumbnail, I'm going to use Bob Barker's image and the company logo. It's like, I don't believe it. Bob Barker soap? Bob Barker game pieces? Bob Barker prison supplies? Again, Bob Barker prison supplies. I never thought those words were ever going to leave my lips in that exact order ever. 
It blows my mind. It blows my mind. There is a prison supply chain store called Barb Barker. Bloody hell. This world is nuts. This world is nuts. Okay, okay, we, we, we got a uh, uh, slot A, final slot for episode six. Barb Barker prison supply store. Striker from Hell of a Boss is going to take up the last uh, slot. Okay. Wow. Okay, here we go. Episode 7. Uh, episode 6 recap. Sweet Sally Mae, Ed Bosco, Rosie, Stolas, Barbie Wire, Rarity, Barb Barker, the television game show host, and the prison supply chain store, uh, and Striker. Wow. Anyway. Spin the wheel. Um, here we go. First slot for episode seven is going to be Griff from Farfetch. Griff is back. Griff is the uh, I, I'm going to say vocals now. He has the vocals for uh, Sizemoid, and it kind of has the personality of Shaggy Scooby Doo. Anyway, spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. Let's see who else we got in this tournament. There we go, we finally got Princess Luna on board. Welcome on board, Princess Luna. The bringer of the night. Oh, that'd be interesting if, uh... Nyx and, uh, Princess Luna were in the same episode. Uh, Nyx is, um, Alana's OC. Anyway, spend the wheel, spend the wheel, spend the wheel. We, we gotta get going, we, got, we gotta move on, we gotta move on with our lives. I gotta do the I gotta do the medley tournaments anyway. Eric Cartman of South Park lore. Yeah, this is a very uh, this is a very funny um story. Apparently, in post COVID, Eric Cartman's a rabbi. I shit you not, ladies and gentlemen. Eric Cartman is a rabbi. He has a wife and three kids. I know, right? Anyway. Uh, spin the wheel, spin the wheel. Rainbow Dash! Uh, My Little Pony G4. Alright, we're gonna spin the wheel once again. Rue from Far Fetched. I don't think she's ever made an appearance on this show before. I'm not. I'm not quite certain. Anyway, spin the wheel. Let's see what else we got. Vivian Madrano, of course. Of course, we would have Vivian Madrano. At this point, it would not be a uh, trivia motor party medley tournament without her. Actually, that I may be wrong. I don't see Vivian Madrano in the trivia motor party too. I can sometimes be full of it. Anyway, spin the wheel. Let's get some more players. We we gotta get this going. I'm stalling too much for dead air time. Katie Cat from Prepper the Rapper. Um. Does she also have a video game um, spin-off? I, I want to say yes. I want to say yes. Anyway, uh, final slot for episode 7 is going to be filled up by... Manic the Hedgehog of Sonic Underground. Remember Sonic Underground? No? Well, Sonic Underground was this whole French project that made its way into the United States and on syndicated television. It was the most off-canon Sonic uh, series I have ever seen in my entire life, but I loved the lore behind it. Really loved the lore. I kind of wish that Manic and Sonya would have been carried over to other versions of Sonic the Hedgehog. I would love, I would absolutely love it if Manic the Hedgehog was in Sonic Boom. Uh, anyway... <laughs> 
Episode 7 recap. Crip, Crip Princess Luna, Eric Cartman, Rainbow Dash, Drew, Vivian Madrano, Katie Cat, and Manic. Alright. Final episode. Slot number one. It will be occupied by... Uh, ha, ha, we're back at it, ladies and gentlemen, Lucifer Magne, Charlie's dad, the king of hell, we all know who he is at this point, oh boy, he is back, and will he know Jack, who is this Jack, I don't know who Jack is either, I don't think anybody will ever know Jack, cause we just don't know Jack, I don't know Jack, you don't know Jack. Next up on the docket, Velvet from Hasman Hotel. Oh, this is going to be a very interesting episode. Yep, I'm using the line again. Very interesting episode. Uh, we got the King of Hell versus the, one of the Overlords of Hell. All right, spinning the wheel once again. See what we got in store. Next up is... It's not trivia murder party, but still, oh, there might still be a bit of a competition between the king and queens of hell. Oh, this is still going to be a very interesting episode, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, uh, I, I can't wait until we get this uh, episode uh, online. And I, I'm sure you can't wait either. All right, let's spin the wheel once again and see what else we can grab on board. Next up is Cherry Bomb. Oh, boy. Lucifer is uh, being surrounded by ladies all of a sudden. Yeah, there's like three girls to the one dude on the episode. Of course, it can all change in a heartbeat. Anyway, let's get slot number five of episode eight filled up, and it's going to be filled up with Tom Grassi. Oh, never mind. I was wrong. It won't be an all-ladies episode for... Um, for uh, Lucifer, we got we got a dude on board. Tom Grassi, the Packers fan that's also a vegan and it actually makes a pretty fine comedy show. Comedy YouTube channel. Look him up. Tom Grassi Comedy. Anyway, slot number six is going to be filled up with... I am going up against the devil and his wife again. I'm going up. I am coming up! I am self-inserting myself into the tournament because, yes! Because, yes! I am going to win it because I know Jack. I've been knowing Jack since that game released in 1995 and I was only three years old. I was a six-year-old little kid playing around with You Don't Know Jack. Albeit, I was answering stuff at random so I didn't really know the questions and stuff. But I've known Jack since the day they were born, ladies and gentlemen. You don't know Jack. You don't know Jack Volume 2. You don't know Jack Volume 3. You don't know Jack the Ride. Jack in the Fifth Dimension. Jack the Lost Gold. Head Rush. Jack Offline. You don't know Jack 2011. You don't know Jack 2015. Jack Box Party Packs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Oh... And I am here to take on the world. Bring everything you got. Spinning the wheel once again. We now have... Pops from the regular show. Oh, boy. he's going to be a fish out of water. Well, then again, so will Tom Grassi. Tom Grassi's definitely going to be a fish out of water. And uh, it's the same thing. I'm going to say thanks, since I'm a self-insert, I'm always a fish out of water. Because I don't think there's any other self-inserts I got. Oh! 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 Voiced critical. Oh, critical is in. Hmm. In the same episode as myself. Again! Again! Critical's in the same episode as me again. And he's also in the same episode as Lucifer. Is there something about my lore that attracts both Lucifer?